the airports of the future will literally float on water. Imagine it's January 1930 and you've just picked up a fresh copy of Popular Mechanics. You turn to page 8 and you see an incredible paragraph. News flash! Floating airports across the Atlantic. Every 400 miles you stop and refresh yourself before soaring off again. Looking at these towering behemoths standing 80 feet above the surface of the ocean. Watch out Mr. Rockefeller, I'll see you in first class. Sadly, that future never came to pass, but we're still talking about the possibility of floating airports, and in some scenarios, it makes sense. Often a city can outgrow the capacity of its local airport. A floating airport is an option that can reduce noise pollution. Not many people are living on open water. Also, you can solve a really tough problem with space. Many cities just don't have the luxury of open level ground on which they could build another airport. Some are hemmed in by geographic features. Others just have such a dense urban population, it's not an option. And it's not like this is an unprecedented idea. Shortly after the invention of the airplane, Brave, or perhaps crazy, pilots began to experiment with landing on and taking off from boats. By the 1920s, the first aircraft carriers were sailing the seas, and we've even experimented with floating airports in the recent past. Back in 1995, the Technological Research Association of Mega Float formed in Japan. They built a 1,000 meter scale model of a runway. The full thing would be 5,000 meters long. And the project faced many challenges. How do you build an airport that can remain steady in changing seas so that aircraft can safely take off and land on it? How do you design a floating airport that can withstand damage and still remain viable? How do you design it so it doesn't cause irreversible damage to the environment? The mega float approach was to have shipbuilders create each segment of this 1,000 meter long runway. And the segments themselves were huge. They were 300 meters by 60 meters. That's like taking three football fields and laying them end to end. They towed each section to Tokyo Bay, fitted them together, and welded the whole thing into a single runway. According to the designers, it was so huge it actually spanned multiple wave cycles, that is, the crest and troughs of various waves, and they all canceled each other out. All that being said, by 2000, the Megafloat experiment had come to an end, and the whole thing was disassembled. But people are still talking about floating airports in other areas. In San Diego, there have been two separate proposals for floating airports. Then there's the proposed London Britannia Airport, a six runway airport that would exist on the Thames Estuary, where the river meets the North Sea. It would cost upwards of $60 billion to make, but if it could recapture those costs in its operation, it would all be worthwhile. What do you guys think? Are floating airports something we should be talking about, or does it make more sense to switch to some other technologies that decrease our reliance on air travel, like the Hyperloop? Want well, to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks to Toyota for sponsoring this show and making it possible. If you enjoyed this episode, hit that like button, join the Forward Thinking Think Tank by subscribing to our channel, and then jet over here for some other amazing videos.